All right, y'all ready to rock and roll today? I know you are, good deal. All right, we're beginning a new series today, and you can tell with the big sign behind me that we are calling Catalyst, right? What it is, is a detailed, in-depth study on the ministry and the desire and how the Holy Spirit works in your life. It's vital, critical that we know how he works and what he wants to do and what he was sent to do so that we can cooperate with him. How many of you agree with that, right? Instead of being cross-grained, be in harmony with him. Now, I picked the word catalyst because a catalyst sets in motion a chain of events, a reaction. And the dictionary calls that, uh, defines it as the causing or accelerating of a chemical change by the addition of a substance that is not permanently affected by the reaction. So I want to focus on the word change. We've been studying, we just finished last week, talking about growing. And by no means are we forgetting that. We believe it is God's desire for each of us to grow, to grow up into him in all things. And we spend a lot of time talking about growing and what it is and how it accomplishes. And this goes right along with it because the truth is the, when the Holy Spirit, as you will see, comes into our lives, he comes to accelerate change in our lives, to get things moving in our lives, to affect us. And he's able to do it even though he's among us and we are far from holy or far from perfect, far from pure, it doesn't affect him. A catalyst has that ability to come into a mix of persons or powers, the dictionary says, and affect a change without being affected by the other things around it. So the Holy Spirit is in us to affect us and to change us. All right, now if you have your Bible, uh, open it with me to the book of Genesis, the first chapter. That's pretty simple, huh? Say, so where is that, Pastor? First book in the Bible. All right? First book in the Bible. I remember the first time I went to a church where they asked us to open our Bibles, and they asked us to open it, and I went to the table of contents. I didn't know the difference between an epistle and an apostle, all right? But I learned. Amen. I figured it out. And if I figured it out, you can figure it out. All right? Genesis chapter 1. Right? Now, we're going to read chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. So look at it here. Okay, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Jump with me over to verse 26, all right? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. I wanted you to read those verses because uh, in the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament, there are different names for God. Now, the Bible will translate them in English basically as God or Lord or Savior or Redeemer. But in the Bible, there's different words. And in studying those words, you learn the different characteristics of God. Okay? Here, the word God is is not Jehovah or Yahweh, which would be Old Testament names, but it's the Hebrew name Elohim, E-L-O-H-I-M. Elohim is a word that was used in context to describe what we would call the plurality of God, or what we would say in our world, the Trinity. Now you see it in verse 26, where he said, and God said, let us. And God said, let us. So there was a plurality there. We know them as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. How many of you are with me so far, right? Probably not teaching anything you already know. But let us be clear. Let us be clear, all right? That it is one God. The Bible said that for the God we serve is one God. All right? It's one God manifested three ways. He manifests as the Father, He manifests as the Son, He manifests as the Spirit, but it's all one God. Now, above that, it kind of leaves my pay scale, okay? But the best illustration I can give you to help you to understand how that can be, because I have people say to me, how can it be? Well, just like you be, right? You 
are a three-part being. You are a spirit. You have a soul, which is your mind, your emotions, and your will. And you, along with your soul, live in your body. While I talk to you, or if I saw you somewhere, I may, in the course of 15 seconds, touch all three parts of you. But I'm not talking to three different people. I'm talking to one person. And you manifest three ways. Amen? Amen? All right, so the same thing's true with them. We are made in their image and their likeness. They're three-part, we're three-part. Kind of interesting, isn't it? All right? So they manifest as one, okay? So and the first thing I wanted you to notice here besides that, so the second thing is, is that the first time you see the Holy Spirit, what is he doing? He's moving. He's moving. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, there's going to be action. He comes to affect and to accelerate change to affect and accelerate growth he has a mission he has a purpose the holy spirit is not passive among us or in us he is not a casual bystander standing in the edges of your life watching you he is in your life to accelerate to affect to cause your life to move all right for it to improve for you to be better hallelujah Amen. All right. Now go with me to the Gospel of Matthew. I want to show you something there. All right. Matthew chapter 3. First book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 3. Okay. And you're going to see all three of them in manifestation again. Okay. Are you there? Amen. Matthew 3 verse 13. Then came Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John stopped him and saying, Lord, I need to be baptized of you, and yet you come to me. Jesus answered and said to him, Allow it to be so, for it, it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. And when Jesus was baptized and went up straightway out of the water, behold, the, angel, the heavens were opened upon him, and he, John, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. So there you see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit manifested all in the same place at the same time, yet separately. Amen. Now, I know that a few of you deal with people at work or relatives that are always, you know, trying to get you off track and get you confused, you know. And I even have guys come up here, you know, after service occasionally and they want to argue with me about Scripture, and they'll say, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, that there's only Jesus. There's only Jesus. It's only Jesus. It's only Jesus. Well, mm, just stick with the word. All right. Don't let people get you off track. Don't let people pull you off into weirdness. There is the Father, there is the Son, and there is the Holy Spirit. Are they one? Yes. Are they separate? Yes. But they're one. They're separate, but they're one. I have left my pay scale. Okay? Just like you're one, but you're separate. Let's just go with it. Amen. All right? Okay? You with me? Have I confused you totally here? It's not that confusing, really, right? There's three in one. All right? So here we see them. Now, go with me to John, the 14th chapter, okay? John chapter 14, the gospel of John. We're going to jump in. We're going to look at this catalyst, this, this, this magnificent spiritual being we call the Holy Spirit, and what he's sent to do and what he wants to do and how he's here to affect our lives and affect our families and affect us as a church family. Right? This incredible thing that he does. All right, John chapter 14. Have you got it? Are you all awake today? Okay. John chapter 14. Jesus said in verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give unto you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it knows him not. Excuse me, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him, 
for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Verse 6, 7, 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. All right, jump with me to verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, in case we weren't sure who it was, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, Jesus is coming to the end of his life and he is giving out really important information here in the 14th chapter, 15, 16, 17 chapter, really important information. And so he is telling them or letting them know what we all know. They were living it. We can look back and read it that he is going to be crucified. He's going to be raised from the dead. He's going to hang around the earth for about 40 days, and then he is going to ascend into heaven. And he's saying that when I leave, right, don't get uptight, don't get anxious, don't get fretful, because the Father is going to send another comforter to you. And that comforter, he said, is the Holy Spirit. Now, I think that these words were really powerful in the lives of the disciple because I can imagine that living with Jesus for three years could become, you would get to where you would really like that. How many of you agree with that, right? I mean, you, know, you run out of food, no problem. He just turns, multiplies the loaves and the fishes. Okay? You get sick, he heals you. You get caught in a storm, he quiets the storm, right? If need be, he can even let you walk on water. That's a pretty good life when you're living with the master. How many of you think you could get used to that lifestyle right there? Amen. Pretty good deal, right? You know, my kids and my staff all tease me because they all love to travel with me to conferences. And the reason why they love to travel with me, oh, I would love to tell myself, it's because they enjoy the fellowship and they enjoy the fun. And they enjoy. No, they love to travel with me because when you travel with me, like the Hillsong Conference, doors open, seats are saved. You get invited in the back room and you get to eat dinner with Brian and Bobby and and the singers and Joel and everybody's back there and, and you get really good seats and you get things happen and you've got a driver that picks you up at the hotel and takes you to the conference and brings you coffee and takes you. I mean, they like doing conference with me. So whenever conference comes up, they always ask. The first question they ask, they don't ask if they can go. They ask if I'm going. telling the truth right because if I'm not going they're not so sure they want to go but if I'm going then they start asking if they can go right so traveling with Charles pretty good living with Jesus was real good all right and so he tells them I'm leaving calm down I'm going to send another comforter now write this down if you're taking notes or just make note of it in your thinking the word another there means of equal quality, not different or lesser. Equal quality. Hmm? He is just like me. What I did for you, he will do for you. What I came to do in your life, he's going to come to do the exact same thing. He is equal to me. He's not higher than me. He's not lesser than me. He's equal. Amen. Hmm? When I was thinking about this, it's funny, you know, the, I, 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 the Lord reminded me one time when my kids were little and uh, uh, they were really small. I, I think uh, they were like maybe five and eight or eight and 11, something like that. It was a Sunday and our kids wanted ice cream. So I said, man, you don't have to twist my arm to go get ice cream. So I piled them in the car and took them down to Baskin Robbins and I let them pick them out. You know, they give them those big old giant scoops, right? At Baskin Robbins, pretty cool, right? And so they had it and Jared, you know, wanted his on a cone and I always, I always get mine in a cup because a cone drips and you lose good ice cream. There's some wisdom for you. Get a cup. 
Amen. You get all that good stuff then. Amen. So anyway, uh, he had a cone, and we walked out to the car, and he was just a little guy. You can still see him. And he tripped or something, wasn't paying attention, and dropped it. And he started crying. I feel so sorry for him. And I remember I bent down. I said, no problem, son. I'll go in and get you some more. So we went back in, right? And I got him exactly the same ice cream, exactly the same stack that he had it before, exactly the same. Just because he'd ordered pralines and cream and cookies and cream and dropped it, I then didn't say, well, no, now you just got to get vanilla and chocolate. No, he got exactly the same comfort. Right? So the Holy Spirit is exactly the same as Jesus. All right? So whatever Jesus came to do, the Holy Spirit has come to do the same thing. All right? So did, you get, did you get that? Okay. Now, what is a comforter? What is a comforter? Okay, let me give you the definitions because this is what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. Are you glad you came today? Is this making sense to you? Okay. He is a presence in your life. He is a presence in your life. All right? So Jesus said, I'll send another comforter. The word comforter, I'll give you just some of the definitions. It means legal advisor. All right? He's our legal advisor. Now, what does he mean by that? What do I mean by that? Legal advisor. Why do you need a legal advisor? Think with me now. Huh? When's the best time to talk to a lawyer? Before you need one. <laughs> Ooh, I'm just giving out wisdom today. When you get ice cream, get a cup. <laughs> and second, talk to a lawyer before you need the lawyer. Right? The best time to get advice from an attorney is before you need an attorney. That's the best time. All right? It's amazing to me how many times I've talked to people and have looked at them and they have situations in their life. And I say to them, did you talk to an attorney before you signed this contract? No. Well, you're going to talk to one now. And if you'd have talked to one before, you'd have paid one hour because the attorney would have told you not to sign it. The Holy Spirit comes to keep us on the right side of the ledger, to give us good legal advice to where you don't mess up your life. Can I get a good amen today, right? He is our legal advisor. He is our legal advisor. And isn't that what Jesus did in the Gospels? As you read the Gospels, wasn't he constantly teaching, live this way, don't live that way, live this way, don't live that way? What was he doing? He was being your legal advisor. And that's what the Holy Spirit comes to do in your life. I'm going to show you how he does it as we go through the study over the next few weeks, okay? So he comes as our legal advisor. Number two, right? The comforter is one who comes forward in behalf of or as the representative of another. So the Holy Spirit comes forward, listen to it, on behalf of and the representative of another. On whose behalf does he come forward in my life and in your life? On whose behalf? Well, honestly, my brothers and sisters, he comes forward in your life and in my life on behalf of the Godhead on behalf of the Father, on behalf of the Son, on behalf of himself. He comes before, he comes forward into our lives. He steps boldly into my life, boldly into, your, boldly into my family, your family, into our church family, on behalf of the will of the Father, on behalf of the desire of God for your life. He pleads that case. The literal definition of the comforter means he who pleads God's cause with us. He pleads God's cause with us. He represents the Father in our lives. He pleads God's cause with us. You know, when I wrote that down, I put here in my notes, I, I know you can't see it, I put, wow, don't we need this? Don't we need this in our lives? I do. Because you know why I believe I need that? Because I hear so many other voices. I hear so many other opinions. I have so much other stuff coming into my mind and into my heart. I hear so much other stuff, 
right? So many other things, opinions from family, friends, media, television, movies, printed material, people I don't even want to tell me, give me their opinion about how I, they think I ought to live. I have all kinds of things trying to move my heart to be a part of this and a part of that. And the Holy Spirit has come to plead God's cause with us. Remember, Jesus said in John, for this cause I was born. A cause. God has a cause in the earth. And I'm convinced a lot of people live really shallow, unexciting lives because they're not connected to a cause. You know, I'm a cause. You basically live for thank God it's Friday. It's pretty shallow. Hmm? If that's the highlight of your life, Friday, you need to get connected to a cause. Amen. Amen. All right? So he comes to plead God's cause with us. This is a part of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life to plead God's cause. And what is God's cause? Isn't that what Jesus did? How much of Jesus' teaching started like this? So is the kingdom of God. 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 What was he doing? He was pleading with you to live according to the principles of God's kingdom, to connect yourself to God's kingdom. To plead, and the Holy Spirit comes to do the same thing. You know, you come to church, and in 40 minutes, the Holy Spirit, through me or whoever's up here talking, through the music, through people around you, what is he doing? He is pleading God's cause in your life. He's trying to move you from here to here, or to keep you where he moved you last week from there to here. He's trying to keep you there because he's wanting to take you to where God wants you to be. And he knows that you're being buffeted by all kinds of opinions, all kinds of doubt, all kinds of unbelief, all kinds of doctrines, and he will plead God's cause with you. Stay the course. Stay on track. Don't get moved. Don't get distracted. Keep going forward. Don't look back. Believe this. Don't believe that. Live this way. Act that way. Feel this. Don't feel that. Don't let those words come out of your mouth. Amen. Right? Right? Amen? Amen. Do you know how many times I've had in counseling sessions, I've, I began to talk to people and they'll sit there and they'll start shaking their heads and I'll say to them, you already knew that before I said it, didn't you? Yeah. You already knew that. You knew that before you came in here, huh? Yeah. Well, how did you know that? It's the Holy Spirit pleading God's cause in your life. It's pleading God's cause in your life. Please, you know, Pastor, I just knew in my heart I shouldn't go over there. Then why'd you go? Well, something told me. No, no, not something. Someone. His name is H. Spirit. And he's come to plead God's cause in your life. Isn't that good? All right, can we go a little further? Let's go a little further, huh? Amen. It also means, the word, the word comforter also means to comfort, to encourage, to exhort. To comfort, to encourage, to exhort. Man, I can't tell you how many times in my life I've come home and just be like, really? Any of you ever had a day like that? Hmm? Where well, you just come home and you walk in, you just sit down in a chair and you're just like, really? Seriously? Really? Hmm? Where somebody has lied about you or turned their back on you or let you down or didn't do what they said they would do or did what they said they wouldn't do or, you know... You've stood for something for years and years and years, and then a rumor starts, and people just automatically believe the rumor instead of the fruit of your life. Amen. You might know what I'm talking about today, right? I mean, you're just like, really? Really? You've known me for 30 years, and you believe that? You don't believe what you've lived with, but you believe that? Really? 
Hmm? And you'll be sitting there, right? And that's when the Holy Spirit, if you'll listen, if you'll turn your ears inward, you'll hear encouraging words. You'll hear him say, don't worry about that. We know the truth about you. Just because somebody calls you a plum tree doesn't make you a plum tree. Everybody can see the oranges. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Huh? At the end of your life, they won't be waiting for you. We're waiting for you, and we like the way you're doing it. Don't sweat those people. Just keep going. Keep fighting for the cause of Christ. Am I making sense to you today, right? And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. He will encourage you. He will encourage you. He'll edify you. Right, I guarantee you, some of many of you in this room have had this experience, and you didn't even know who it was. You've had this experience, man. I just can't explain it. I should be down. I should be more upset than I am. Uh, is there something wrong with me? No, there's nothing wrong with you. You're being impacted by the catalyst of the Holy Spirit. He is accelerating change in you. He's creating something new on the inside of you. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Let's go a little bit further. Right. Go with me to verse 26. Are we learning anything good? Okay, look at verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, watch this, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Now, obviously, I emphasize what I think are the two key words there, the word teach and the word remembrance. So let's look at it. Write this down, right? How many of you know today the Holy Spirit wants to affect your life? Huh? I said, how many of you know he wants to affect your life? How many of you know he wants to make your life better? How many of you know he wants to make your life more advantage, right? Give, give you more profit in your life. Make, give your life better, right? This is what Jesus came to do. I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. Well, Jesus said he's just like me, so the Holy Spirit's here to do the same thing. All right? So he says now, he's come to teach you. Now, what does it mean by teach? Now, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. The word teach, the first definition means to set your mind right. Amen. To set your mind right. God, that is so beautiful. To set your mind right. You know, Romans 12 chapter says we need to renew our minds, but a part of renewing our minds is setting our minds right. You know, when you, when you become a child of God, your spirit man gets born again, but nothing happens to your mind. You know, you can, your mind can be still be full of all kinds of bad thinking, bad doctrine, bad believing, huh? bad images, bad uh, emotions. Come on. And man, we need to get our mind centered up. We need to get our mind right. Why? Because as a man thinketh, so is he. All right, so the Holy Spirit has come to help you to get your mind right right to get your mind right now he affects your mind through his word through his presence through his power through his influence he affects your mind right things that you never questioned once the holy spirit is in your life you'll find yourself going why am i thinking like that does anybody know what i'm talking about right why Right? I remember when it began to happen to me, right? And I was hanging around with some guys, and, you know, we were just guys, and, and, uh, and we were products of our environment. And we had some, what we thought were pretty, you know, hip, cool things to think. And, and I remember one day we were standing there, and guys were talking like we always talked. I always used to agree with them. And then this day I was like, And I remember thinking, right? I was in my 20s, and I remember thinking, why did I ever hang around with guys this stupid? <laughs> right? I mean, I loved them. I still love them. I cared about them, but I remember thinking that. And I thought, I used to think like that. That is so dumb. <laughs> now, where did that come from? That's the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. He's setting your mind right. Instead of being tilted or off kilter, he sets your mind right. How many of you know what I'm talking about, right? He sets your mind right. Because if your mind's right, 
wow, you're going to get it. You're going to have a much better life than if your mind's all jacked up. Amen. Hmm? I was watching a TV show the other night, and they, a guy was on the show talking about that he, that, that he can't sleep at night. And because he said he can't get his mind to be quiet. And the people around him were laughing like, oh, wow, wow. You know, like that was a good thing, you know. Oh, it's because you're so creative. And I thought, no, it's because he didn't have his mind right. Doesn't have his mind right. Doesn't have his mind right. He's tormented. He's afraid. No, and he said, no, I'm not being creative. He said, I'm worrying. I'm upset. I'm, I'm angry. And I thought, you know, see, he needs his mind right. But to get your mind right, you need to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. Can I say something to you in love and you won't get mad at me? How many of you promise you won't get mad at me? You won't get mad at me? A lot of you are thinking, we'll say it first and then we'll decide we're going to get mad at you. No, you have to take a step of faith here, all right? Can I just say something to you? I believe that a lot of problems with alcohol and drugs and stuff like that is because people have not opened themselves up to the ministry and the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. You're trying to get your mind quiet. You're trying to get the beast quiet on the inside of you because you're not allowing the comforter to have his place in your life. You don't know he's there. You don't know how to cooperate with him. And if that's you, thank God you came to church today because now hopefully we're going to be able to get you going down the right road. All right, so say so to set the mind right. It also means to influence the understanding of the person being taught. So the Holy Spirit wants to influence what I understand by what I'm being taught. Listen to this, listen to this. The word teach means the shaping of the will. So he wants to shape our wills. Well, this is so critical, so critical, because all of us know that what you will to do is what you're going to do, whether anybody likes it or not. You are in control of your will. Hmm? Hmm? And my will, when I became a child of God, my will needed to be shaped. It needed to be shaped so I could have the abundant life that Jesus wants me to have, so I could live in the kingdom of God. Okay, the shaping of your will. I'm going to teach you how he does that, all right? Can't get to it today, but I'm just laying it out to you today so you become aware of it and you know it. Now, why is this important, right? Why is this important that, you, that, that the Holy Spirit shapes your will, right? Because, you know, it doesn't matter. You know this, but let me remind you. It doesn't matter what other people want for you. Amen. What matters is what you want for you. Hmm? There's a show on TV called Intervention, and I don't watch it. I've tried to watch it a couple times, and I just can't because I, 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 I know generally where that's going to end because I have been in those meetings physically myself. I have been in those meetings where they bring the son or the grandfather or the mother or the grandmother or the niece or the nephew into the room, and the rest of the family's there, and they beg them and plead with them. And generally, they just get up and walk out. Why? Because it doesn't matter what the grandkids want. Doesn't matter what their will is. What matters is what granddaddy's will is. And as long as granddaddy's will is to get drunk, then that's what's going to keep happening. And I don't mean that judgmentally. I'm just telling you. It's not what someone wills for you. It's what you will for you. Now, if you're going to grow and you're going to become the man or the woman that God wants you to be, you need to face that because you hear a lot of praying in Christianity, God, make me change. God's not going to make you change. God's going to help you change. The Holy Spirit is here to shape your will if you're willing to give your will to him to shape because you admit that you need it to be shaped. Does that make sense? All right, let's continue on. We're almost done. You hanging with me? Amen. All right, the game doesn't start for four and a half hours. You're good. <laughs> You're good. All right? Now, 
If you don't get anything out of what I teach you today, please get this next point. I hope you get more than this. But if you get this, I'll call it a successful day from my standpoint. All right, the word remembrance. The word remembrance has a powerful definition. Get this. Are you listening? Are you awake? If the guy next to you dozing off, give him one. Because they got to get this. In love. Or a pinch. Right here. Remember when, your, remember when your mother used to grab you right? Ooh, sweet Jesus. Ooh. Huh? My mother used to pinch me so hard there I'd get bruises. You get arrested for that today, I think. All right? Right there. Oh, my God. And then she wondered why I hated to go to church because she'd always pinch me right there. Be careful what you hate because God will have you do it for the rest of your life just to prove to you who's Lord and who isn't. I'm convinced of that, right? I used to be the most critical guy in the world about preachers receiving offerings. I'm sure God just went, oh, really? Well, we'll just let you uh, do that for the rest of your life. All right, so here we go. Remembrance. The word remembrance, get this, are you ready? Here it comes. The word remembrance means to call to mind. So the Holy Spirit brings things that you knew back to mind. He also calls things to your mind that you didn't know. Some of you have had this. You've been talking to people and you've said when it was over, wow, I said things I didn't even know. I didn't even know I knew that. Where did that come from? It's not a that, it's a him. Amen. Okay, but here's the good part. Get this. Are you paying attention? This is critical. It says he calls to mind. So the Holy Spirit teaches us and brings things to our remembrance, calls things to mind using hints and suggestions. Using hints and suggestions, hints and suggestions, hints and suggestions. Pastor, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. The key word there is led. The Lord is our shepherd. He leads us. The Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, lead, they do not force. They lead by hints and suggestions. Hmm? Hey. Hint, hint, hint. That didn't work for David. It's not going to work for you. Just thought we... <laughs> Just a suggestion. Keep those words in your mouth because once they come out of your mouth ooh, you think she's mad now say that <laughs> just a suggestion do what you want now we're laughing but are you getting it are you getting how they operate are you getting how they are now personally I wish they were more forceful than that, personally. I wish there were times when they had come into my life and grabbed me and said, you stupid, stupid boy. <laughs> oh, I really do. Not one time in my 50 years has they ever done that to me. What they do is they stand there and go, uh, we wouldn't do that. That's not what we teach you. Uh, we put that in the Bible in Jacob's life as a hint to you that it doesn't work. But go ahead if you want. We'll love you. But you're going to jack up your life. Am I making sense to you today? And when you understand that, they don't push. 
They don't force. They don't break. You hear people say all the time, God, break my will. No, they're not going to break your will. They're going to shape your will. Hmm? I have people ask me all the time, God, Charles, pray with me that God make me. God, I'm not going to make you. The fact that you want him to make you already proves that he has suggested to you. Now, if you will give them your will, they will strengthen you to do it. I have to stop. Does it earn some good things today? Amen. Give the Lord a good hand clap. Stand your feet with me, please. We're off to a great start, huh? Okay, it's 1156. Church is not over till 12. If you leave now, may the fleas of a thousand camels be in your bed tonight. Tonight. I don't even know if camels have fleas, but Tommy Barnett used that one. It sounded good. Amen. Lift your hands. Let's pray just for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus. We honor you and we thank you today for your word. We honor you and thank you today for what you're teaching us. Father, we open ourselves up. We want the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We want him to get our minds right. Can you say amen to that? We want him to shape our wills. We want him to bring hints and suggestions to our lives. We're open to it all. We want to be taught. We want to be conformed. We want to be the men and the women and have the families that you want us to have. Have the church you want us to have to be to your glory, all of it to your glory. In Jesus' name. Could have every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you're here today. And you have yet to accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. I've talked about the Holy Spirit. Now I'm talking about the Son. The Son has come to be your Savior, your Redeemer, your Redeemer and your Deliverer. Jesus came to live in you, to be your Savior, to sit on the throne of your heart, to help shape your life. And they do it from the inside out. In a moment, I'm going to lead the whole church in a prayer. If you're here today and, and you looked in your heart, you would say, Pastor, I've never received Jesus as Lord in my life, but I want to. I want to. I'm going to pray with you today. If that's you today and you're going to pray, if you'd say today, I'm not a child of God, but I want to be. I can't make it any plainer than that. I'm not a child of God, but I want to be. I'm going to pray with you today. If that's you, before we pray, put your hand up right now because I want to give you something to help you in, your, in this new decision you're making. Let me see your hand today. Yes, right down front. Thank you. Right here. God bless you. Pastor, pray with me. I've got a CD I'm going to give you. All right? Anybody else before we pray? All right. I want all of you to raise your hands. Everybody else, say this in me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, believe I believe in you. Come live in me. Live in me. I, receive I receive you today as my Savior. As my Savior. I need a you as my Savior. Come live in me. I put you on the throne of my heart. I confess you as my risen Lord. Live in me. Be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.